Hi Fox, how are you doing? Another interesting round in the Tata Steel Tournament, the fourth one we had today. And for this video I, cho I chose the game uh, played by Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, who wasn't having uh, a very smooth tournament so far, but today he was playing black uh, against the local GM, Luke Van Veli, who was white. Let's see how it went, it was an interesting game I think. Uh, Van Veli plays 1d4, as usually he does. And Carlsen goes for uh, g6, uh, going for likely a Grunfeld, knight f3. One really doesn't want to test uh, Carlsen's preparation for the World Championship match. So he goes knight f3, bishop g7, and g3. The g3 Grunfeld has been used by Carlsen himself with white pieces a lot. I mean, white black, of course, here can choose either to go for the King's Indian with d6 or go for the Grunfeld as the world champion did, playing d5. C takes, knight takes, bishop g2, g2, and knight retreats to b6. This is very theoretical. Knight c3, knight c6. Now we have a bunch of very normal and developing moves. Very well known theory for these players. I had no idea, I had to look it up in a database, of course. Both players castle, and well, the main line here and the most popular move is to play e3 but Van Veli plays e instead d5, another known move another possible move here, knight goes to a5 and once again here uh, Van Veli doesn't choose the most popular choice which is to play e4 where uh, which is certainly very natural and c6 is what uh, black usually plays here but Van Willis asset plays queen to c2. Another possibility. c6, d takes, knight takes, rook to d1, bishop to d7, and black keeps uh, developing his pieces. Bishop to f4. We still have around 10 games in this exact position, this line, so it's interesting. Already 13 moves have been played. Well, the position looks rather playable for both players. White is slightly ahead in development, his queen is like mm, a little bit better placed, he's, it's the queen isn't in the middle of the rooks. Queen c8 is played, okay, uh, you have the possibility of playing sometimes bishop h3. Rook ac1 is played, and the bishop goes to f5 first. Kind of provoking e4, and now the bishop goes to g4. Um, here Van Veli plays a move, which, okay, not, it's not bad, queen to b3, you're giving uh, the file to the rook to play some x rays against black queen, etc. Uh, but the engine here is giving another possibility as a as a better move. Uh, this is certainly, it was certainly an interesting line. Playing knight d5, the immediate centralization, where uh, after knight takes, e takes, uh, Black must be careful, certainly, as natural moves as uh, going away with the knight against the pawn attack are in fact losing, it seems. First of all, if knight a5, well, queen a4, double attack, white is attacking the queen and black knight at the same time, so this seems a uh, difficult position. Know that queen to, oops, not there, but queen to here to d8 for instance try to defend seems to fail as white has bishop to c7 but otherwise if the knight goes to I don't know d8 queen e2 once again we're attacking a couple of here in this case a pawn and the queen and white has a very active position here black pieces are kind of in the back rank not very active there so instead e5 it seems was uh, the counter blast here, black had to try. Let me find that move. Here it is, counter attacking against the bishop. And here there is there are some uh, some interesting moves like going to with the bishop to g5, bishop to uh, taking f3, bishop takes f3. Now knight d4, attacking both the queen and the bishop on f3, which would be taken with a check. So some interesting possibilities there were here to calculate. But instead, as I said. Queen b3 was played, and this allows uh, Carlsen to play a very nice move. Queen e6 immediately offering a queen exchange. 
completing the web development now the rooks are connected and of course he has no problem on exchanging there white took there which may come as a slight surprise um, and here uh, it would seem natural to take with the, 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 with the bishop at the first side but taking with the pawn is absolutely strong it is a very uh, very nice example of how isolated and doubled pawn uh, not always are weak in this case they are quite quite useful quite a uh, nice pair of pawns first of all they're controlling very important squares this d6 square for instance is nice a uh, light squares here on d5 and f5 and very importantly they're activating uh, by leaving this pawn on f7 is activating the rook on f8 which is going to be very important as we're gonna see as we already know activities everything is che in chess so this was a nice capture here taking on a6 and activating the rook e5 is played uh, because in fact it is black who's threatening to play if uh, e5 if white just passes plays a3 e5 uh, the pawn is attacking the bishop it's of course protected by the knight and the, and the bishop there and whenever this bishop uh, departs now we see how important this rook is on f8 and unfortunately for white this poor knight on f3 is hanging attacked twice and defended only once so e5 had to be played here so one really did it and knight d5 immediate recentralization re attacking here on f4 note once again how active the rook is how important it is on the f file on f8 and well forcing more or less to take there he takes now this pawn is passed by the way passed pawn there not I mean it's not that much maybe but already something knight g5 is played uh, interesting move by one will he's uh, willing to give up the exchange here on d1 to get some the bishop pair this pawn on d5 would check some interesting activity not a bad move uh, Carlson didn't accept it he played e6 um, taking on d1 was certainly a possibility uh, the point is that d5 is now hanging with check so white would probably take it king h8 and take the bishop back when in exchange for the exchange in compensation for the exchange he has the bishop pair some quite active pieces these bishops aren't bad the knight is not that well bad placed and slightly weak uh, weakness uh, for for the black king it doesn't has the king doesn't have squares to go right now it's like a little bit feeling uh, incarcerated here and okay it's compensation not sure if enough to be better but okay it's it's a playable position I guess for both but instead Carlson well just defended the pawn with e6 said show me show me what other plans do you have there well f3 was played uh, this bishop doesn't have that much future so h6 is played and after these captures we have a very funny situation um, all the squares on the G file are, are filled are occupied by a piece or a pawn traffic jam on the G file in, in, in fact we have like um, a double image here couple of pawns then a bishop and then the king uh, for white in this side for black in this side very curious very <laughs> aesthetic position nice one you don't see every day but course white takes on g5 the bishop was under attack black takes the important bishop uh, pawn on e5 sorry and bishop f4 material is equal the position should be more or less balanced as well I guess white has the bishop pair but black has couple of connected past pawns here which are not maybe that strong yet but are already something knight c6 uh, Black has a couple of ideas here. Knight goes back to a low e5. Why not? B2 is hanging as well. Um, and really here plays, well, I don't know, a little bit strange move. I don't get it that much. Plays g5. Well, yes, fixing a weakness uh, of, wha of black in light squares. Okay, white has a light squared bishop. Black doesn't. So in a simpler end game this would be uh, quite a weakness for black and if white gets to take it this is a dangerous passed pawn etc okay but uh, in practical game it is losing b2 which uh, Carlson took immediately and it is not clear black has that much compensation in fact uh, bishop d4 check was played king h1 now it is white king which is not that safe here 
rook a d8 centralizing rook b1 okay white has some compensation in exchange for the pawn so there's a couple of rooks here which are active on open files bishop pair etc but not sure if it's enough rook f7 was played just protects b7 and bishop h3 the threat is obviously to take on e6 for king here taking uh, the rook so rook e8 protects that rook e2 once again and really insists on attacking the weakness here but e5 well calculated uh, allowing this rook b5 uh, note that uh, black cannot take on f4 the rook would be hanging on e8 with check so it just goes e f8 and now bishop e6 was played here um, okay already objectively speaking the position should be lost for white while well, black is really organizing very well although allowing bishop e6 of course he's taking the bishop on f4 um, the ingency says here uh, Manveli makes quite a mistake he takes with the rook on b7 attacking even more this pinned rook but as uh, Magnus Carlsen is going to brilliantly show us um, this is a mistake we'll see why in a second uh, what he should have done is to take a4 it seems although the position is still bad and after king g7 now you can take the the rook there the exchange although white takes d5 rook takes f4 there is a check okay black should be better couple of pieces for the rook and a possible possible passer here a healthy passer so instead rook takes b7 happened here and Magnus Carlsen Mr. World Champion is going to show us why this is a mistake well this is why f3 this pawn is all of a sudden uh, a pain in the <coughs> leg for Van Valley. so let's see how it went on rook d2 king g7 and Van Valley takes on f7 liquidates into this endgame when black has a couple of very well coordinated and centralized minor pieces for the rook and apart from that he has a scary passer here on f3 so quite a good position overall should be winning uh, for black that's what the engine says at least I'm sure amateur players like me would lose this uh, hundred uh, lose this hundred of times with black with black although you know it, fe it feels good uh, you have centralized PC PCs here this king can move right can't move right now so feels really a good position rook to d3 attacking the pawn but f2 king g2 king e6 this king has well some ways to get in some ideas the bishop is protecting f2 the knight is protecting the bishop so everything is connected here h4 <coughs> bc bishop to b6 rook f3 knight d5 challenging white to sacrifice here of course that would be senseless rook f6 checks that um, that's van Veli's idea king back and a4 well he tries to hold the position try not to to give black uh, easy opportunities to get in bishop to d4 um, well some discoveries in the air and in fact uh, well Van Veli here allows some tactics which unfortunately for him are losing he plays g4 allowing this capture attacking the rook with both the bishop and the knight relying or kind of trying here rook f4 attacking both pieces at the same time there are no checks but try to find here the winning move for black Magnus Carlsen did find it of course very nice move could be a tactics trainer this one knight goes to h2 very beautiful move and white resigns uh, of course black is threatening to uh, promote this pawn on the next move you can't put the king here uh, the knight is protecting so of course if you allow it there well after the exchange that's there's no clue uh, there's no it makes no sense to keep playing and of course if the point is that if white takes very simply bishop to e5 picking up the rook the pawn is still there and the position is absolutely winning for uh, crashing for black so there it went after not so very smooth beginning for in the first three rounds magnus carlsen uh, the world champion wins his first classical game of the year against luke van Veli in tata steel chess tournament Thanks for watching.